not stand for discrimination in any form, no matter how it manifests itself, no matter how it can make it sound, religious freedom. Something is deeply wrong in a state where we would target and discriminate against a people in the name of religion. The religion that I am a part of does not discriminate against anybody because of their sexual orientation, their race, their belief. They are allowed and should be allowed to believe whatever they want to believe. But we should never allow them to impose their belief and to legislate their beliefs upon those who is not good for the state of Georgia. And we stand today as diverse as we are. I am a person of faith and I take my faith very seriously. And that's why I cannot turn over my faith to people who in the past have thought it was all right to discriminate against African Americans. People in the past who thought it was all right to support slavery in America. People in the past who thought it was all right to support Jim Crow and segregation in America. Some of those same people are the ones who are behind Senate Bill 129. When I read my Bible, I see very closely that Jesus had his biggest problems with the religious leaders of his day. Not in the name of religion can we discriminate against God's creation. Not in the name of religion should we discriminate against any group of people, whether they are gay or straight or lesbian or transgender, not whether they are black or white, this bill would allow them to discriminate against little children even, against African Americans. Yeah. It's not just gay people, but a lot of us fall under yeah. this category. And that's why I'm here today. That's why I want my voice to be heard. And I want you to be able to say, we will not allow discrimination in my name. So I want you to say, not in my name. Not in my name. Not in my name. Not in my name. God bless you. Thank you, Reverend McDonald. And we know that the world that we want to live in is a world where fairness is not a partisan issue. Where all people, regardless of their politics, can stand together and say some things are wrong and discrimination is one of them. Yes. I'm very pleased to introduce a young man who has been one of the voices of the Georgia Unites Against Discrimination campaign. David Bachman is the president and owner of the Neck Candy Tie Company. He's a former county coordinator for Saxby Shambliss for Senate a former college Republican chairman of the University of West Georgia, and a National St Steering Committee member of Students for McCain Palin, David Bachman. Thank you for the warm welcome. It's uh, great to be here. My name is David Bachman. I'm a resident right here in downtown Atlanta. I'm a business owner and I'm a proud member of the Republican Party. Right. And I'm here today to say that I will not let a small minority of vocal legislators hijack my state. Yeah. Yeah. This bill will open the door to discrimination and close the door to business. Young people support job growth, lower taxes, 
more personal responsibility and individual freedom. Mm -hmm. And in my eyes, individual freedom means equal rights. Yeah. And when young people hear our legislators here in the state capitol closing the door on the LGBT community, members of their family, their friends, they close the door and they look the other way. America is one of the greatest places on earth. I had an idea, a hobby. I went to the Atlanta City Hall. I opened my business. You can do whatever you want, wherever you want, and however you want. But this law could change that. It will hurt companies from attracting top talent to our state. That's why every major Georgia corporation, including Delta Airlines, Home Depot, the Georgia Chamber of Commerce and Coca-Cola has come out and said, we are firmly against this bill. In fact, I had the opportunity to question Senator Sam McCoon, who is a member of the state legislator and a member of my party, and I asked him, why are you throwing this bill back into the faces of the business community in Georgia who have already said no? And guess what? I didn't get an answer. I think it's more important if they focus on the real issues, such as creating jobs, improving schools, improving our infrastructure, and not discrimination. In fact, this same law was passed by the Republicans in Arizona last year. And guess what? When it arrived on Senator Jan Brewer's desk, a Republican, she said no and vetoed the bill. And I want to read a quote that Governor Brewer made at a press conference. She said, I sincerely believe Senate Bill 1062 has potential to create more problems than it purports to solve. If it could divide Arizona in ways that we could not imagine and no one would ever want. Religious liberty is a core American and Arizona value, but so is non-discrimination. Well, guess, guess what? The Georgia Republicans, that small minority within the party, here under the Gold Dome, needs to listen to Governor Jan Brewer. I am a member of a growing movement of young conservatives against any legislation that could discriminate against the LGBT community and LGBT Georgians. And I say, please stand with me and say, no, 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 no. Thank you very much. Keep up the pressure. Contact the state legislators. Thank you, David. Um, and as David alluded to, this is an issue that the eyes of the country are upon the state of Georgia. The next speaker I would like to introduce is here to represent the Human Rights Campaign. HRC, I am pleased to say, joined us at the Georgia Unites Against Discrimination Campaign and is doing some amazing work throughout the state of Georgia to make sure that voters understand what is going on and that voters are able to connect with their representatives to let them know they do not support a license to discriminate in Georgia. HRC is also one of 27 national LGBT organizations that has written an open letter to the leadership and the governor of our state telling them that this is bad, not just for Georgia, but it's bad for Georgia's national reputation. Here to tell you more about those efforts is Brad DeFore, the HRC National Bo from the HRC National Board of Governors. Brad. Okay, turn it off. <laughs> well, I didn't prepare a chant, so I'm in trouble. Right. <laughs> um, 
I'm proud to be here as a representative of the Human Rights Campaign, as a business owner and a resident of Georgia for nearly 20 years. The sponsors of this bill think that the LGBT community and our allies aren't paying attention. They think they can pass it without any of us taking notice or speaking out. I have a very clear message for Senator McCoon and his allies. The eyes of the LGBT community nationwide are on you. Yes. Yes. We will That's not right. be silent while you try to pass one of the most restrictive and anti-LGBT bills in the country. The Human Rights Campaign and other national organizations are watching Georgia, and we're watching closely. We won't just stand by and let this pass. That's right. That's right. This bill has big implications for Georgia, but this fight is about America. Yes. We're seeing these types of bills all across the country. And let's be clear, they have absolutely nothing to do with religion. Right. The freedom of religion is already protected by the Georgia and U.S. Constitution. What these bills are about is allowing discrimination against LGBT people and others, plain and simple. Yes. They're an excuse for people who want to hurt those they don't agree with or like, without legal consequences. What kind of message would that send about Georgia, about the kind of state we live in? Well, for one, it would tell talented young LGBT people that their ideas aren't welcome here, and neither are they. Instead, it would enshrine anti-LGBT discrimination as a fundamental part of the Georgia experience. Hmm. That's a devastating message. Yes. It's bad for our families, it's bad for our communities, it's bad for our economy. Yes. It's just plain bad for Georgia. Yes. Yes. That's what's at stake with this bill. It's about the kind of future we want for our state. We don't want to live in a Georgia where a police officer can refuse to work in an event like this just because he or she doesn't agree with it. We don't want to work, live in a Georgia where a business can fire one of its best employees just because they are LGBT. Yes. Yes. And we don't want to live in a Georgia where a landlord can evict a mother just because she's raising her two children on her own. That's right. Yes. That's right. Georgia's future should be one where we continue to protect and value the freedom of religion. And where everyone is protected from discrimination. Yes. Yes. That should be Georgia's future. You know it. I know it. Let's make sure they know it. Yeah. Thank you for being here today. Don't stop now. You've got two weeks. Write and call your lawmakers. Talk to your friends. Talk to your family. Talk to your employers. Make sure Georgia businesses know how we feel. Yes. Make sure they let these guys and gals know how we feel. If we don't speak, they won't listen. That's right. So speak loud and clear and let them hear you. Thank you, you very much. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Thank you, Brad. And for those of you who are standing up here in front, take a moment to look around. We are filling Liberty Plaza. We should fill Liberty Plaza. And what we stand for today is true liberty, true freedom of religion. And we are Georgians united against discrimination. We've talked a lot about the impact that this legislation would have upon the gay and transgender community because we live with religious-based discrimination all the time. But there are a number of unintended consequences that this legislation, should it become the law, would bring upon our communities. One of the strong voices to point out the real dangers of this bill is David Cook, the elected district attorney for the Macon Circuit. David. Good afternoon. I'm David Cook, and my wife and I, we live in Macon because. Thank you. Shout out to Macon. Yes. We live in Macon because we wanted to raise our children in the church where we met. 
Mm -hmm. the First Baptist Church of Christ of Macon, Georgia. My wife and I are both deacons in our church. I drive the van for the youth choir. Uh huh. And I also serve on the Baptist Joint Committee for Religious Liberty in Washington, D.C. because religious liberty is that important to me. Mm -hmm. But when I heard about these so-called religious liberty bills, my first thought was the lack of necessity. Had these folks not heard of the First Amendment? I saw that there was no real need. But what I also saw was a very real danger. A danger to every child whose parent believes in spare the rod and spore the child. That's right. Mm -hmm. Regardless of the size of the rod or the number of lashes it takes to get what they want. Mm. I thought of the very real danger to every woman whose husband believes that God has ordained her submission enforceable by his own hands. You know, our First Amendment was created as a shield. A shield to protect our faith from the government and our government from the dangers of theocracy. Our First Amendment was never intended as a sword and a lash to inflict pain and suffering or even as a wedge to divide us. Our Constitution instead is the greatest unifying document in the history of the world. And the arrogance and the disingenuousness of those pushing this bill will never be forgotten. Because, as you know, for they are on the wrong side of history. And because of that, together, you and I can defeat it, and we can win, and we can make sure that we keep equality here in Georgia. God bless you all. God bless the state of Georgia, and God bless America. Thank you, David. And I know that we've got folks not just from the metro Atlanta area here today. I know we have people from Columbus. Yes! Um, I know in addition to David, there's other folks from Macon, Athens, any place else I've forgotten? Be a credit Cobb County! (laughs) And of course, Cobb County! So, the the supporters of this legislation have said that they do not see that this legislation is about discrimination. I have one question for them, and I hope we will all ask that question. If this is not about discrimination, why are they so adamant that language not be added to the legislation that would clarify that. If this is not about discrimination, why are the chants at their rallies pass the bill with no amendments? Mm. If this is not about discrimination, why does it so paral- so par- run so parallel to legislation that is promoting discrimination in states around the country. We must draw a firm line and say no to discrimination. And as we do that, I do think it is important that we recognize that we too are people of faith. That the freedom to practice your religion is 
an important American doctrine. Yes. Yes. That the freedom to have your faith and express your faith is important. And it is something that we can all agree to. It is the discrimination and the unintended consequences. It is what's hidden in the language of this bill and hidden in the hearts of some that we have to be concerned about. The last speaker that I would like to introduce today is Rabbi Joshua Heller from Congregation B'nai Torah. Right. Rabbi Heller is acknowledged as a leader in the conservative movement. He serves on the executive committee of the Rabbinical Assembly as vice president of the Southeast Region and co-chairs its Atlanta Convention and has served on the Rabbinical Cabinet of the Jewish Theological Seminary. Right. Rabbi Heller. My friends, good afternoon. Good afternoon. I admit I am an unlikely speaker here today. There are others amongst my colleagues standing here who have established themselves as advocates on issues that are of concern to many joined here today, and I will admit that I have not done so. I was ordained in a domination within Judaism that is still wrestling with those issues. I serve a congregation that is among the five largest in Georgia of any denomination, and among those five, we are among the most traditional. Mm -hmm. And yet I have chosen to come and stand before and with you today because I see a wrong being contemplated. I see a wrong being contemplated in the name of God, in the name of people of faith, and I cannot be silent and let that wrong come to pass. Not in my name, not in our name, and not in God's name. I stand here today knowing that there are voices within the Jewish tradition and community that debate sometimes stridently questions of gender and sexuality, questions that begin in Leviticus, and I've read those passages in Leviticus. But I've also read, read Leviticus 19.18 that says, Love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. And I've read Leviticus 25.17, Don't oppress your neighbor. And I can be no less serious about those verses than any other in the scripture that I hold dear. And so when I see someone citing Judaism, citing the Holy Torah to exclude people from a larger society, to impede human beings trying to live in dignity, I must say, not in my name, not in our name, not in God's name. People of faith may decide how to observe in their homes and even who to include or exclude in their own houses of worship, in their own places of religious study. But in a society where faith is the litmus test to decide who may live among us as neighbors, who may work at or patronize our places of business, then we are all at risk. Not just gays and lesbians, but Jews and Christians alike. And I say no, not in my name, not in our name, not in God's name. I have heard an argument made that this bill will protect against autopsy, which is a practice opposed by traditional Jewish belief, except among rare circumstances. And I would like to spare families that experience, but that are easier. There are more subtle legal ways to accomplish that goal. Right. And most importantly, Judaism says that we uphold the dignity of the dead, but not at the expense of the life and the dignity of the living. Yeah. <laughs> Not in my name, not in our name, and not in God's name. As Jews, we do not have the hubris to impose our faith traditions on a larger society, a quilt of so many colors and beliefs and understandings. We do not ask that those with whom we come into contact conform to the strictures of Jewish law. 
I have never demanded that the Bulldogs in Athens not handle a pigskin on the Sabbath. <laughs> To the contrary, though, there is a principle of Dina de Malchuta Dina, that the law of the land must be respected when it protects justly. And the law of our land and our state must protect all, Jew and Gentile, gay and straight alike. Mm -hmm. And so I speak now to those who are not here, people who are people of faith, people who believe deeply in the power of the Bible, and I ask you to contemplate. Will you choose one set of verses over another? Yes. Yes. And I say, I ask that people of faith and conscience reject this law, yes. yeah. which would provide cover for hatred and discrimination yes. under false flag of faith. People who are committed to their faith tradition should oppose this bill, not despite their faith, but because of it. And they should say, not in my name, not in our name, not in God's name. Thank you, Rabbi. Um, and before we close out, I saw him wandering around a moment ago. I want to thank Senator Vincent Fort. Uh, for all you do every day, Senator, thank you. So, the legislative session ends at midnight on April 2nd. That's just a few, two short weeks away. But we have much work to do. This will not be easy. It is an uphill battle, but it is a battle that I know we can win because justice is on our side. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The people are on our side. Yeah. And Georgia is united Woo. against yeah. discrimination. The things that you can do, these, thir these next two Thursday nights, we will be having phone banking. Please come. We need to help get the word out around the state. We need you to help us with our phone banking efforts. We need you to reach out directly to your representative. You can dial 855-982-2729. Again, that's 855-982-2729. That will connect you directly to your state representative. And if you're not currently signed up for the alerts for Georgia Unites Against Discrimination, do that today. This is the most effective means we have to communicate with you. Things will be changing day to day, sometimes hour to hour. We need you we need your friends, we need your family, we need your neighbors. This is a battle we must win. Thank you all for being here. Woo!